Good morning, good morning, happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a great day so far. I know it's still like five minutes early, but I was I was super early today. I, I even woke up at the normal time, but just everything flowed perfectly. Um, and like this, I guess it's as early as I possibly could get get to stream if I really, really had everything work out exactly the way I wanted to. But um, I figured we'll sort of like hang out and chat a little bit waiting for for seven while also like sort of maybe discuss what the what the plan is so we have the uh the flocking simulation running as it is um i was looking at the movements for this and I, i'm not i'm not super happy with it i have some ideas of like why that is i think i'm really happy with the turning away from the edges of the screen but a lot less happy with the turning away from from each other the voids have this idea that my the the way that I turn the voids is not the same uh, when they're close to each other, they're staying towards each other, away from each other, towards like the center, uh, as they are from from the edge of the screen. So it's it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit rough. Do I have some errors in the vector maths? That could also that could also do it. Also, good morning, Utsby. Yeah, I, um, vector math is one of those things I want to get stronger at, which is another reason I was like not so unhappy that like initially the vector two um, didn't didn't work out the way I wanted it to and had to like implement it myself. But um, oh man, what what are my errors? If we go and take a look at our the vector math here, so that's going to be in point, and we have a bunch of these um, these here. I suppose also I could we could do some testing for these. Uh, as well, that would that would definitely uh, uh, help me ensure that I've got the right the right math for it. Maybe it'll be easier for me to e upload a fork so you can diff. Oh well, if if that's easier for you, I I I, I don't want you to uh, to have to feel like you have to do any extra. Wanna come up here? Maybe. We have an early kitten showing today. Hey, that's my that's my wire. That's my face. Those are the purrs. Okay, so maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll get to coding as soon as Zilby's done petting. He's going back and forth between super sleepy and tired and uh, and I want to chew your wire. And maybe your hand. Hello, Chantilly. Oh, now he's back to. Now he's back to chewing whatever he can get his. Get his mouth on.
No, you're not allowed to chew on that. No. Bad habit. Okay, you're gonna lose heading privileges. All right, Zilby. You go over here. I'll turn on cat cam. Except you're just coming over here to try to chew on the wire again, aren't you? Oh, right. I totally forgot. Zilby destroyed my ability to, to cut yesterday. And I haven't reset my keyboard yet. Um, I need to remember how to do that. It's... Um, Oh, let's see. It's this, this, like, that. Control reset. That function control reset. There, I think that did it. Okay. So now. Now, if I do control X. Ah, oh, shit. Nope, it still does it. Okay, so that's not it. Um, okay, now. There we go. That's that's working better now. Okay. Uh, so. Nope, that's the wrong app. I want you. Did I make any changes? No, I did not. Okay, excellent. Excellent. We can get back here. Okay, so. I have to hold down, like, the special key and function and shift and then reset. So one, two, three, four keys at the same time, and that resets the keyboard. Um, all right, so what do I want to do? Um we okay so we have we have this idea that that the vector math is is maybe wrong the steering sort of method is different so those need to be changed but today what i was thinking of working on is making the circles triangles i actually think that um by doing this it's going to show the the movement differences and and it's not going to look as good because we have triangles and then that will that will like maybe help us know when everything looks looks better. Plus also I think triangles pointing in the direction that we're moving is gonna look better anyways. Uh, so this is gonna be back into the flocking rust. We're gonna be in the library. Uh, we can see up here, we create a resource with the bird mesh here. Uh, so instead of this circle, we're gonna do a triangle. Let's go ahead and um, I'm actually thinking for this, it might be easier. Um, wait, you already got it? Oh, okay, hold on. Let's let's take a look at USB has copy link location. There it is. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so in flocking rust, source uh wait, systems? Oh, is the math, does the math in flocking rust not at a point? Oh, oh. What? Is that from me? Uh, is that from when I, like, the Zilby thing? Did I accidentally rename a file? That's, okay. That, I wonder... This must be, yeah, that, that's, I think that's from that. I probably can get rid of it. Yep. Really? You, you, you can help me with those. No, I don't think you can. We're not going to use that file. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see, which, which one specifically has the problems in it? Or do they all have the problems in it? I 
Uh, you can see the diff, I think. Avoidance, attraction, or the made ones. Okay, so here's attraction. Can I see the diff from here? Is this diff between mine? Oh, you've all, okay. You already created this as a polygon. Okay. Oh, you've already created it as a, as a triangle. Um, let's see, main. So you change the dimensions. Attraction here. Okay, so you have uh, 2.0 that you're you're doing this for. Some force. Okay, so I'm doing like location minus. Okay, so we're we've reversed this. Um, okay, so we borrow mute and then we're going to force normalize. Okay, so I. Oh, do you change how force normalize works? The reversal is the main error. Oh, okay. And in the other ones, like an avoidance, we reverse that also. The scaling, the scaling is a nicety too. Okay, we can we can reverse the reversal easily. So an attraction, uh, where is here's this location? So we'll just do average location of other voids. Minus location. So you should be happy there. Uh, in avoidance, I think we're reversing this one too. So we have other location. I can cut again. My location minus other location. Uh, and I think it's those two for alignment. Maybe I have to do that one too. I can't remember. Is handle arena edges. Oh, it's sort of like little, little. Oh, like these, these are little like, you know, updates to like make it, make it a little bit nicer. Well, I'm, I'm okay with doing this because it's really easy to like undo with uh, with Git. So, uh, let's see, avoidance, attraction. Okay, alignment didn't have the problem. So, I go run, and let's see how this looks. Because I'm not doing any of the other problems. So if they're if they're moving together, they're attracting way too much. So that's interesting. So then 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 we would need to um, like fix fix those numbers. Interesting. Okay. Um, it helps with the like we we can fix the numbers maybe next time. Um, for right now, uh, Tommy Luco, hello. Uh, we are doing good. We're just getting started here. Um, what I want to do is maybe switch ourselves down to a single bird. And go down to one bird.
I'll just leave I'll just leave this running a little bit I don't know how to properly like leave this running in the background so we can sort of like watch it um but it's like one bird and I want to make this now a triangle so we can see this single void yeah um okay so uh just maybe to clean up this function a little bit I'm gonna create another function in here uh function create this is going to be the create the and this probably shouldn't be on here necessarily. We can do this. This could be just directly in here. Um, meshes. Like mesh to RS. There is an issue in avoidance we're using the velocity and not the separation vector did you catch that no i did not where was that in avoidance oh acceleration add velocities you're right Oh, acceleration, add that. And we need, yeah, we definitely need the distance for that one. So that's avoidance. Uh, yeah, this is going to be. So create the avoidance force. This is going to be the distance. And it doesn't need to be this like entire you think you're already a point. Uh, so that should be. Like that. Uh, type point point cannot be dereferenced. Do we need to clone it? Because you're a point here. Okay. Oh, 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 it needs to be just a reference. Never mind. Hold on. Okay. There you go. That that might be better. You can try it. still has the numbers are still wrong because it was like assuming the wrong kind of math for that so i need to like fix the fix the uh speeds at which everybody can leave but should hopefully be easier now want to do that uh we'll come back to one for this so i want to create let's see inside a mesh going to mod mesh All right, we're going to do a pub function create void mesh. Uh, we're going to take in a context, which is a mutable reference to a context. Um, I'm just going to return the mesh here. So we can return a game result with a mesh inside that all right so let's do this um i want to create a triangle that is around a zero point so we need like the the width and the height of the of the triangle um and i don't know if i want to make it like longer or shorter and like one end I, i'm not completely sure it it might make sense to make it like make make it a little bit longer here, let's let's take a look at our design options. So if we come up here. Let's say we have this is like our center point. Then. 
I want to create a triangle around this center point. So it might be something like this. We're slightly longer on these ends and the center point is still in the center, but you can now clearly tell which way this is pointing. So if we rotate to the right, we can tell it's it's moving to the right. If I make a purely uh, square triangle, then or square triangle, uh, equal triangle, then that might be not, not quite as easy to sort of like see. Uh, so let's let's try like playing around with the edges and the sizes here. Um, the other thing is like we want if we want our like radius, the triangles can also fit inside of a circle, right? So if I were to create like a circle like this, I create it as just a yeah. And the top here, I do something like this. This might be the better triangle to make, and I can still have the center dot in the center right there. I think I think this makes sense. So like the center position can be here. We're going to have a longer line and less of an angle. So from the center, we go up and then start right there and then go down and angle down. OK, so. Perhaps we should pass in the the Boyd. like width um, or the, like the void radius as if we're as if we are a circle. It's going to be an F32. Oh, I want to remap. Okay, there you go. Now I can press caps log and it's a escape key. OK, so if I if I have that. Um, we have the Boyd radius and we can calculate the center position of this. Our radius is only half, so that would be perfect. So maybe I want like the Boyd size would be the full diameter. It would be like all the way from the left to the right, top to the bottom. We're going to use circles, essentially circle math. I think that'll be easier for this, even though we represent them as a triangle. Um, so then the radius would be this by half. So um, radius equals the void size divided by 2.0. So that now gives me the halfway point. I can move halfway up all the way down and a little bit to the left. Um, so in here, we can maybe define let like what is that left part? I don't know what that angle would be called. Um, it's like the bottom. See, like the bottom, bottom length, bottom size. Um, and we can do this to be. If you're the full size. Oh, if we do like half of this circle over, that makes sense. Goes over to here. That's probably what I want. I want to do like halfway down a little bit. So over 
down here and over. It'll be outside the circle a little bit. I think I think that'll be fine. I'm going to I'm going to make that variable as soon as we need it. Um, OK, so I'm going to return a mesh builder. I create a new. And that. Uh, triangles, we're only going to create one of them. Um, this is a reference to Okay, this is a reference to um, an array of just like zero zero and there needs to be So it's like a reference of points And a list needs to be three so hold on, let's let's do this. Uh, let uh, like the triangles equal to can be an array, but then there's needs to be like three of these. So you would be like center up. So um, x would be zero dot zero, and then the y would be up by the half, so the radius. Uh, so that would be the negative radius. Then let's say we want to now go down to the bottom left. Uh, we're going to move to, in this case, the zero. We're not going to stay at the center anymore. We're going to move by half of whatever that width is. So I'm, I'm thinking we can take this radius and, and divide that in half again. Uh, so that could be our radius divided by 2.0. That'll be on the bottom right. Oh, I'm going to the left first. Negative radius uh, and then the full radius. Um, here and then we'll do radius divided by 2.0 and radius okay so that will give us the triangles now i should be able to make the mesh builder you know triangles we'll put in a reference to the triangles um and then a color let's just do Uh, you need to be question marked, and then we can build pass in the context. And then return the result of that, which is the mesh. So create void mesh comes back into here. So we're gonna do void mesh is equal to create void mesh pass in context and the void size let's make this 15.0 for right now and then there we go we have our void mesh you become a void mesh there and there we go uh, let's see what that looks like. That's not too bad. Can you, can you see that? I can make that a little bit bigger. Maybe it will be a, a little bit nicer. So let's, let's, uh, maybe not like double the size, but like 25. Let's see how that looks. Oh, there we go. I like this. This is going to look really nice. Now, of course, it's not rotating around so that that does look really odd, but I, I love the way this looks um, just in general. So that that's a win already. Now, if we need a rotation amount, uh, Okay, so first of all, I'm going to create a new resource 
no, not resource. I'm going to create a new component rotation that's going to be added to this. And it's going to be an F32, which we already have. So all I need to do is come into component names and we're going to have a rotation. Head back into here and we're going to do a with component. Rotation, and then the component is going to be a component You have the component point. Oh, do I not have a Oh, we don't have a um, f32 component. Let's go ahead and change that so f32 is an F32, uh, which means we also need to cast. We don't need this anymore. That's now that we have multiple things. Okay, so pub function cast um, F32. Uh, we're going to need to be able to cast this as mutable and immutable. So let's just do this first. I don't need to be you anymore. In fact, I can probably right now I can clone these, I'll copy these, but because I'm copying these and they're so similar to each other, I wonder if there's a better way for me to, to deal with these. Like I bet. I bet I could um, create like a macro eventually to like generate these for me. That might be really interesting. That might be a feature learning that we can do. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Um, we're gonna return not a reference to a point, but an F32. I mean, this can, uh, oh, we need the actual we do need the reference to the F32. I guess this one doesn't need to be a reference. It could just be the thing itself. This one, do, however, does need to be a re mutable reference to the F32 so we can change it. If I have self... Okay, so then this is going to be... The F32. You're gonna be the number. Um. Uh, let's see. I guess we could do that. I don't know if there is a, like a reason to that or not. I would just have to do, but I guess it makes makes consistent stays consistent then. So maybe that is for the best. Okay, so let's do a component F32 and uh, we're going to start with a 0, .0 uh, rotation. So there's no rotation whatsoever. Um, for this rotation during the drawing, we need to grab that rotation uh, here. So we have locations. We're also going to have let rotations. Rotation. Um, and we can just borrow this which gives us that ref. We can then inside of here, that rotation is equal to rotations. Uh, we need, okay, so we have the locations. We need to also enumerate this so we can get the in index and component.
let's actually rename that to just like location. So we're shadowing it. That makes sense, at least to me. Uh, let's see. Then rotations. Okay, so this is going to be the rotations of index and then cast to an F32. And then, okay, so we have this default dot dest. And then we're going to have a rotate rotation and we have to pass it uh, the destructured rotation. Okay, I don't think anything else is going to change. I think we're going to get exactly the same sort of behavior right now. Um, but what I can do is start creating the system for updating the rotation. Uh, so let's see, in systems, we're going to have a new file. We're going to call that um, update rotations. Okay, so pub function update stations system. Uh, we know we're going to take in the world. Um, it's the world wrapper. And we're not going to return anything. We're just going to mutate, mutate that. So maybe for right now, let's go ahead and just grab out those rotations mutably. And I'm just going to add like one to it so we can see it spinning around slowly and like verify that the entire rotation system is working correctly. Um, so I'm going to do let mute rotations is um, and yeah, rotations is equal to old dot three one. On it names rotation why am I not getting any of my Let's see is it because I don't need you there you go now I'm getting my stuff all right so I've got this RC ref cell so I want to borrow mute that gives me the ref mute okay I'm good to go here I want to loop through all the rotations. So uh, let's see, we're going to do a rotations dot uh, iter mute. Probably need an enumerate, not fold or each. Uh, this is going to give us our index and our rotation okay and we want you to be cast to mute all right so we have that now i just want to take the rotation uh and i want to plus equals to like um do 1.0 and see how fast that spins and you need to be dereferenced yeah and i know we're not using you right this second okay so update rotation system i'm gonna come back to here go to update and All right, then we add update rotation system in there. Nothing else should really change. That should still, like the rotation should now be uh, just constantly spinning for this one void. Uh, that's, that's definitely working. Let's slow that down just a tiny bit. Uh, we can do like 0 0.1. And I think that should allow us to sort of see that rotation happening. Yeah, there we go. So... 
Now I want it to point in the direction that it's moving. Which means we have to update the rotation based upon its, like, the velocity. And we're doing this after the velocity has been updated, so we'll know that it's going to be accurate. Is that true? Uh, no, not yet. We need to do this after the update. The locations to make sure that we're we're updating this after the velocity has been updated. Otherwise, it's going to be just slightly off. All right, so uh, that means we do need the velocities. Let uh, velocities. Okay, so it gives us that. Oh, we can get the velocity out here. Um, and we're going to cast to a point. All right, so that gives us the velocity now. We need to now figure out how we actually do this. Like, how, how do we set that? And um, how do I know what the direction is to point at? Um, So if something's like, if we have a velocity that's moving in this direction, um, I just want to rotate by by that amount. Um, I know we can use like the pi r squared to get around the circle. Uh, so like pi r squared would be the full circle, right? Pi r half. Oh, a tan two, right? Right, and then is it by the, is it an a tattoo of the of the vector? I, I want to say that there is a um, a tattoo. Like, what what is that? The function a tattoo or arc tattoo um, is defined as the angle in the Euclidean plane given in radians between the positive x-axis and the ray to the point. So, yes. Oh, right, and I think... Function a tattoo, x and y. It's inverse of the tan function, right. Uh, this is all stuff that I, like, I vaguely remember every time I have to do it, and then I forget. So I think what I can do is we can maybe come to a come to our point in here and we're going to get pub function uh, rotation for for the point. Um, it's not going to be the other, and we're going to return an F32. All right, so how does this work? I think we can get a tantu off of a single number inside of um, inside of here, and, and you're saying it's the y is the y a tantu x. So we're going to do self dot y dot a tantu, and then self dot x. And then we can return turn this. So then rotation is going to be the velocity. Dot uh, rotation like that. Fine. Okay. I don't need to dereference you. Oh, right. Because I'm getting rotation off of it like that. Uh, okay. Maybe you. Uh, does that mean you're going to be just working? No is the answer. Um. You want to change your mesh to start out pointing to positive X 
or to the right, as that's the zero radiance position for Atan to. Oh, is that true? Is it pointing like to the right? Oh, interesting. Oh, and I don't I don't want to plus equals to it. I want to just set it equal to. Also. That's that's my other problem. I don't need to add it. There it goes. That's close. Uh is am I sure it's not the other way? Like the the X? Y? What does this do? Oh, that's that's close also, but not not exactly right. So it's, you're probably right. With these math things, I'm I'm rarely the right one. Um, okay. So I'm setting it to be equal to that, and then we're we're moving along the grid. I'm halfway around. The mesh base orientation needs to be to the right. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Uh oh, okay. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. So where's my where's my mesh? I see. So we're going to change this triangle. So we're going to be at. So instead of like starting up at the top like that, we're going to be starting to right and going that way. So we're going to be at. Uh, radius. And you're going to be at the. Negative radius divided by 2.0. Um, then if we go like to the top left, that's just going to be negative radius. Um, and negative radius divided by 2.0. Oh, and I want you to actually be 0.0. .0. Um, and then you're going to be negative radius. Uh, and you're going to be positive radius divided by 2.0. So if we do that. Wait, what did I do? Uh, like that. There we go. Let's I, I want to see it like when I reach the edge it it turn. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Usby. That was that was great. Uh, and so now it's going to uh, now it's going to actually look appropriate. So that's really nice. I like it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and oh, OK, those are all saved. Let's go ahead and commit this before we forget. So um, voids have a triangle mesh now and point in the direction of movement. And for BB ECS, we can, uh, can now calculate rotation and store F32 components. OK. Um, next thing I, I want to visualize like appropriately what what the circle like a radius like the sight range around everything is so I kind of want to create a another draw system uh, and this will just put on like a circle around maybe just like the first one I don't know if it matters um, we're going to put in the 
uh, the visualize, like visualize the sight range, or maybe it'll be like all the little circles around around them, sort of like the different ranges. Uh, so I want this like the visualization, visualize, visualize um, ranges. Press. Visualize. I think I misspelled that. Yeah, it's this is not happy with me. Cool. Um, changing this shouldn't actually be that that bad. Uh, OK, so we're going to have a pub function. Visualize. Ranges. We're going to take in the world, which is a reference to the world wrapper. And uh, I am going to return a game result. And, and that's it, uh, which means I'm also going to take in a context. All right, so for for this, I want to well, I got, I'm going to need the locations and that's pretty much it. That's all I want right now. So let uh, locations is equal to world dot query one. Uh, the location. Um, and then Visualize. Yeah, uh, actually, there's, there's a really cool way to like change this um, and it'll like change it everywhere I want to, uh, except maybe here. This might not do it. Um, but yeah, like I have the ability to do that. And then here I can visu visu visualize like that and that changes it here too which is really cool i like uh, rust analyzer does that for me now uh let's see okay so we're gonna turn a game result okay so we're gonna um let's go ahead and do it to do here so that's not upset at me anymore then we're gonna borrow Get that ref. Okay, so we're happy there. Um, I'm also gonna need, I know it, it is neat. Um, it's like new new things that Rust uh, Analyzer does, updating every week, it's awesome. Great. Let's see, I want to get the site range is like, I think the only. The site range that we have here, I think is the only resource that we have. We have the site range. And then I'm thinking we're probably gonna put in uh, resources for like the other ranges around to to maybe like visualize, okay, here's the attraction, here's, here's the other thing. So uh, inside of visualize, we're now gonna create, uh, so we need the site range. World dot get resource. Uh, resource. Hmm. What did I call it? Resource names, site range, okay. You can't find that? Come on. 
Uh, what would it be in? It would be in like the crate. There you go. Resource names. Site range. All right. Uh, once we have that, I want to borrow you because I'm not trying to mutate you. Um, and then I need to deref to get you out. Um, I can at this point in time even cast you to the F32 that you are. Okay, so uh, I don't need a deref if I'm doing the dot casting. Okay, so that gives me the sight range here. I can now uh, I can now create the mesh for for like the circle that I'm gonna put around the um, uh, around the first location in order to like visualize the um, the sight range on it. I guess uh, we can make this like a white a white circle. So like let sight range um, mesh. It's going to be equal to mesh builder new. We're going to do a circle. Okay, so draw mode. I'm going to do a stroke with a let's do a 1.0 and we'll see if you can see it. Um, okay, so the point the location of where this is. This is going to be the uh, locations of index zero dot. Uh, we need to cast into a point, and then we need to uh, there's like a, a two two array. Okay, and so you're you're just owned a point. Okay, that's fine. Radius, um, the radius needs to be the site range. That's really interesting. Is the radius actually the site range, it, or is it a diameter? Oh, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, so this is gonna be the site range. Um, the tolerance is zero point one, and the color. Let's just make this white. Um, we're going to build and then we can question mark that and then we can do a graphics draw context a reference to the site range mesh and draw ram default uh, we're going to set a destination. Oh, actually, I don't need to set a destination. The mesh is already here. And we're going to return that. Okay. So you're all happy. So then we can come to our main library and in draw. This is this is very expensive because it's creating that mesh every single frame, but I think it's going to be fine because it's like a debug type of um, uh, of thing, and it, it, we're not going to worry. I'm also only drawing it on one of the birds, even if I have all of them out there. We're just doing it on one bird. So this is going to be the uh, visualize ranges. I want you to be a system. Um, okay, so self dot world and then pass it into context. Question mark that. Okay. Expected a semicolon where? Oh, you can't even tell. Tell me. Uh, visualize ranges in systems S 
semicolon there. I don't see any errors here. Like, I see the red. I don't see the file that it's yelling at me about. Uh, let's go ahead and try it. See if um, Rust Analyzer is just not happy. All right, it's just Rust Analyzer not being happy. So this is this is the idea of our like attraction radius right now. Is anything within this this area it wants to be attracted to, or like what what it can see? I kind of feel that I want to double this uh, this radius a little bit, so it can like see things a little bit farther away. Um. But at the same time, I'm kind of okay with it as well here. So we can see right now, as soon as it starts its sight range gets to the edge of the screen, I think. Yeah, that's when it decides to start turning. So that's 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 a good sign. That I like that. Let's um let's go and start taking a look at some of these other systems that we've got. You have arbitrary multiplication factors in the site range. Right, I do. And I want to change that. Uh, I have others arbitrary. We're gonna store those as um as uh, resources, and then it's gonna be better. <laughs> this is where we're gonna we're going to stop that. So this is going to be a refactoring slightly, kind of, because there's no test. So refactor is maybe it's a rewrite of that of that method of doing. Um, OK, so we have the handle arena edges system. If we come here, we have the site range. We no longer right. We're using the site range for for that. I think I think it looks fine right now the way it is. Um, avoidance system so our avoidance system we have this weird thing where okay we're avoiding everyone else based upon how close you are so what i want to do is add in another resource here um and so we're going to go to the resource names so we have the site range i now want like to have like the avoid the avoid range Okay, so the name this is going to be the uh, resource names avoid range, um, and then the resource itself is going to be a resource F32. Um, and I want this to be half of our site range. So I actually do want to say um, let site range is equal to what did we say before? Let's just do like 50.0. And here's our, our site range. You become site range there. And then you're going to be site range divided by 2.0. Now, before I like actually change like anything else, I want to now go to uh, the visualize. And we're now going to create the let um, the avoidance range mesh equal to mesh builder new circle drop mode um you know what at this point in time it's going to be very very similar so i'm going to create this as a as a function um and we're just going to call this to create a bunch of these circle meshes out here 
Let's just grab out, uh, let the avoidance range is equal to world that get resource. All right, will you will you work this time? Um, I want the avoidance. There we go. Okay, the avoidance range. I'm gonna borrow, and then we're gonna cast F32. Uh, then I'm gonna create a function. Um, create a range mesh. We're gonna take in a context, and then it's gonna be like this radius. There's an F32, and that, that's pretty much it, I think. Oh, maybe also the color needs to be passed in. Uh, so that way I can sort of like play around, play around with that a little bit. I'm gonna return a game result with a mesh. Um, I am Hardliner, hello! How are you doing today? And I'm gonna take this entire thing and move you in here. And return you. And there we go. Now it's gonna be that uh, site range mesh is equal to create range mesh context. Uh, the radius is going to be the site range, um, and the color is going to be white. Um, oh, you're still applying to new jobs? Uh, well, that's, um, I mean, that that's good, I suppose. Uh, yeah, it was sad to hear that you were in the position where you had to look for new jobs, but um, good good luck on that. I have I have faith that you'll you'll get a new job soon if you uh and hopefully it'll be a even better than any job you've had in the past. Um okay, so we have the site range mesh. It is, you're still motivated to try to change your current situation. Awesome. Motivation is good. Alright, so we have you coming in. Okay, so locations. This is gonna be the same. We're gonna have the same locations. Uh oh. We do need this as a point passed in, though. Uh, so we need the location, which is going to be a... Um, it's an array of F32, 2. So this can just be location like that. So you're going to be the locations of index zero uh we have to cast to a point and then we have to um do array of that okay uh what else do we have here um our site range needs to be this radius tolerance and then the color is going to be the color I find a uh, mesh in the scope, import you. All right. Now we have the site range mesh. Next one, let. Uh, this is going to be the, uh, what did I call this? Is this the avoid? This is the avoid um, range mesh. The create range mesh and the context. Okay, so the radius is going to be the avoidance range. Um, the color, let's make this color new. Uh, I want you to be, we can make you like maybe red. So be 1.0, 0.0, 0.0. .0, 0, .0. Um, zero uh and the location is gonna be uh, 
this entire thing. Let's actually make this patient is equal to patients of zero x point to array. Then we just pass you in. All right, uh, and I think that has clone on clone copy on it automatically. So then we can just draw you. Uh, so then instead of a site range match, you know, you can be in a void range mesh and everything else is the same. And we'll just return okay like that. And so now we should be able to um, see what our plan is for the avoid range mesh. Like, does that make sense? Like, is that close enough for this? Like, if it gets within that, we're going to um, start avoiding them. I kind of feel that that's maybe a little bit too tight and we need more time to like steer away from them. So, Let's come back to you. If I divide by four, uh, I'm going to do a multiplication. So multiply by 0 0.25. It's just a little bit easier for me to sort of think, okay, that's, uh, I wanted 0 0.75. So one quarter. I feel that that might be where it is right now. And I kind of went like halfway between this and the other one. So between five and so zero to point five and seven five is. Uh, let's see, it's 15. So point. Oh, it's 25, 25 and a half is 12.5. 12.5 plus this is six, six two five or something like that. I mean, arbitrarily that, that looks pretty good for like our attract range. Oh wait, no, this is the avoidance range. This is the avoidance range. Um, okay, so what's what's next? We would have we have the avoidance system, alignment system. So like aligning with everything that we see. Uh, I feel that that works really well with like what we have right now in just the standard site range, and then maybe the attract could be. Attract could be where what we have right now also. And then we up to other locations. Okay, so if we use site for these two, and avoidance gets used the avoid, that that might be that might be good. Alright, so avoidance system. Let's go update you. Um, instead of this site range thing, we're now going to go to the avoid range. Avoid range, borrow, cast, and not that entire arbitrary multiplication trying to figure out what looks right. We're not going to have to worry about that. Uh, we get the locations, we get the accelerations and the velocities. That's all fine. We have locations. We go through all of you. Uh, go through all of the other ones. That's fine. Okay, so then other location cast point. Okay, so I think. Okay, so the distance. If the distance length is less than the avoid range. So if the distance distance to I now have a distance to I think. Um, so we have my location. So what I think I can do is. 
if my location dot uh distance to other location so if that is less than avoid range it's time for us to turn um and i don't want to let's see accelerate acceleration equals okay so we're gonna get the accelerations i don't want to use this distance anymore um i want to then do let force equals we need to make this mutable force equals uh my velocity uh we have velocities here are we even using it no we're not oh we're doing this create oh okay create avoidance force two perpendicular oh right because we were moving to the right um Let me think about this. Do I want to always move to the right? Uh, I don't think I want to. Uh, that was only for like head on collisions. And like I, I could get the other to see if like we're we're going negative to each other. Um, but besides that, I could say like, OK, if my If we are here and there's someone else. I can look at our. We have this plane here that we can look at. If they're like, how do we want to to decide like which way to steer if um, if they're above us, we can steer left. If they're below us, we can steer right. Uh, but I, I could also do if they're to the left of us, we can steer right. And if they're to the right of us, we can steer left. Um, I can also do this thing where I determine what quadrant they're in and we steer away from them based upon that. So if they're above and to the left, we steer to the right. If they're above and to the right, we steer to the left. If they're below and to the right, Yeah, it's not part of the usual simulation. If they're below and to the right, um, I steer to the left. If they're below and to the left, I steer right. It almost doesn't matter, right? Like I can choose arbitrarily which which way I do it as long as I'm consistent, which it's in code. It's going to be consistent. So maybe maybe I need to do this. So let's let's go back to this idea of like another function to generate. Um, can undo. So so create the avoidance force. We're going to have the velocity of ourselves. And we need the location, the other location. Which is also a reference to a point. So I need these two. Then uh, force equals. OK, so we need to. Decide what to do. Based upon based upon this. So. If. Their location. Um, I'm going to introduce the velocity so that I can get the perpendicular right or left and do a nice gentle turn uh, as opposed to a big turn. Um, that's all. That's all. The velocity is really only for the perpendicular left and right to the velocity. So it's a it's a more gentle turn. That's what I'm thinking of to be consistent with how I turn in uh, when approaching the edge of the screen. Uh, but the other location is really where where it's important. So if oh, we need my location too. 
your reference to a point. So we need all of these. So we can now do let meet force is equal to create the avoidance force. Uh, all right, so we have the velocity. So velocities of index, uh, my location, we already have that. And other location, we have that. Uh, okay, so components, I need to then cast to a point. That should be fine. And now you're just yelling at me because I'm not actually doing the thing. Um, okay, so if they're to the left and above me, so that means their X is less than ours. So if um, if other location dot X is less than my location dot X. And and let me think about this. If if they're to my left, I'll just turn to the right. If they're to my right, I'll turn to the left. I could just do that because it doesn't matter if they're below me or not. I can just turn to the left or right. So that's what I'm going to do. If they're to my left, then uh, I'm going to do that. Um, you force force is going to be equal to velocity dot to perpendicular. They're to my left. I'm turning to the right. Else force is going to be equal to velocity dot to perpendicular left. Get rid of you. Then we're going to normalize um, and we need to. Well, uh, have our speed here. Um, of like how like our, our force, our turning force. Am I? Am I creating like the same the same problem? Um, I was hoping that I'm not. Uh, so it gives us our force, and then I want to uh, the accelerations is plus equals to force. Uh, and so then if I come back to here, let's turn off. I was in avoidance, right? So I can turn off these two. And we can turn on all of our birds. Now they now they avoid each other. And they do it through like that turning. And it's it I mean, it feels like it looks pretty good when they're trying to avoid each other. They, they don't it's not like a really sudden turn anymore. It's kind of random their like movement because they're not attracting to each other. Uh, but we can, I'm, I'm watching this one that I, I think it looks pretty good the way they're trying to avoid each other. Uh, if you look at this one, it has to go within the red circle. They're maybe not super great at the turning. They try, it's very, it's pretty subtle. Because 
that one, they had turned away from that one a little bit. You could try making this a little bit stronger. Um, so we have this arbitrary turn force, which we probably also want to turn into a... Um, uh, a... Yeah, we probably also want to turn this into a, a resource. And so it's the same everywhere, like whatever your turn force is. Now it's like, no, get away from me. They're very good at getting away from each other now. Maybe, maybe a little bit too good. I mean, we could have it like where they just going the exact opposite of so okay that that's this is this is one way for us doing it the other way for us to do this would be to instead of doing this um this two perpendicular left or right i i could instead get the other velocity um so if I do, we'll call this like the other velocity. Uh, we create this force is now going to be equal to the other velocity dot um, opposite. Is it like is there like a reverse? There should be a reverse. I'll create it. Uh, which is like exactly the other direction of the of that. So we're going to go to this points. I have a reverse. Here. Uh, I'm going to call this two reverse. No, we can just do a reverse like this. Um, going to be a mutable self. Uh, we're not going to turn anything. Um, I think the way reverse works is if we're having something that's going like like this, and we want now to be going back this direction, it's the negative, uh, the negative y and the negative x. So we want to be going like negative x um, and neg let's see. So if this is a if this is like a five and negative three, then over here we are now going negative. So backwards by this, so it's going to be negative five um, and three. So Oh, it's just multiplied by negative one. That that's all it is. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I don't need a reverse. That's that yeah. 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 Okay, so this is gonna be um I want the other velocity. I'm gonna just gonna take the other velocity. Uh I'm going to clone it and then multiply it by negative one. Oh, right. Uh, I want uh, to clone and then multiply scalar by negative 1.0. That's going to give me... Oh, I can't do that. So mute force. Force dot multiply scalar 1.0. Then... You say I don't need to clone.
But our... Mm, I don't... I don't trust you. Or are you going to auto-copy here because it's Mute Force? Hmm. kind of like being explicit with that. Uh, okay, so this is this is the other way to do that. And let's go back to 0 0.1 for our, our speed and see what this feels like. What are you upset about? Uh, where's my error? Return to Force. Turns a point. Yeah, okay, you need to be cloned. Now you're not doing anything. Oh, it's because it's my own, it's my own uh, uh, velocity. I need to pass in the other velocity. Uh, do I have the other velocity? I do. I have velocities of um, other index, which will now go in there. Uh, it's not very much of a turn. You probably need to be like 0.25 or 0.5. Come on, run into other people. You kind of do that. It's very, it's very slow. So maybe you do need to be like a 0.5. You need a strong enough uh, repulsion force. There it goes. It's a bit abrupt when when it happens, but I think this is fine. And the other thing is, is is it really within the sight range or is it within half the sight range? I feel like I need to like double double what we think the sight the avoidance range is. Like this avoid range, I feel like it all almost needs to be doubled because it's um. This isn't avoidance. This is inverse velocity alignment. Well, how how does avoidance work? Because I thought it was just moving away from each other, right? Or is it moving away from the location? Like I guess I guess I don't know what what avoidance really means other than like I thought it was just gonna be like steering away from each other, like left then just move away from that. Like, I'm going to avoid it slightly. That's That was my original interpretation of the rules. Avoidance is the separation vector. And what does that mean? Steer to avoid crowded local flock mates. That's just steer. The issue we went through at the beginning of the stream, uh, but I wasn't. Hmm. I guess like I had a completely different understanding of that. Like I was thinking about that in a completely different way. Um. Oh, so does this mean basically we get the center position of the average of everyone else and we move away? Or we, we move away from everyone that I can see? I guess like I, I'm confused about what I want that to look like. 
Oh, that that's not helpful. Look at your avoidance diff again. So you're looking at distance, uh, subtracting the two, the two to, um, uh, together to get a new point. Um, and then you're getting acceleration and then you're just adding, okay, you're creating avoidance force with the distance and the sight range. Uh, it's okay, so using a velocity as the distance. And then a sight range. You're cloning the the distance. You're normalizing it, and then you're multiplying it by. Then you're then you're going for like your your uh, how strong to be, based upon how close you are. But basically, you're just using. You're getting like the. Um, the two points and you're saying like, OK, if we are right there, move away from that. So, OK, so you're not going based on where it's going, move away from where it's going. You're going move away from where it is. So move away from where it is, that's going to be mine minus the other. So in avoidance, that would be mine minus the other locations, right? Yeah, so my location minus other location, that would be, it's not really a velocity at this point in time, it's now, uh, we could have it like uh, it shouldn't be like the force. Maybe it's like the it's the it's not the distance. It's like the direction. It's the line to them. Um, so I guess it could be distance. Wait, do I already have the distance? Oh, I do. Yeah. OK, so if the distance is that. then I can pass in distance. Okay. Then I want distance. I can make you be just a full point. Um, oh, we can make you just be a reference, then we'll clone you at this point in time. And mute force. Then we just do this. I don't need to multiply the scalar anymore. We just normalize and and do that, the, the speed. Okay, smash types. Um, All right, so that that looks pretty good. Continuing to prove that uh, that math is my weakest, my weakest point. OK, so uh, thank you so much, Usvi. This is this is super helpful getting this. I think we've got good numbers for this now, especially with the visualization. It helps us really look at this and really see like what we want it to look like. Now they they pretty much do a good job at, at avoiding each other. So now we can do the same thing with alignment and we can do the same thing with attraction. Um, 
but I am going to have to do that tomorrow. I have a meeting coming up soon. Uh, so 